Okay. So for the next uh, section, I'm going to introduce the Huan material of the uh, uh, cell group. As I mentioned before, that actually the Huan material or the myelinated fibers can be categorized into three different types. The first one is the association fibers. The second one is the conventional fibers, and the final one is the projection fiber. Let me um, take the uh, figure as the uh, example to illust illustrate why uh, we categorize the fibers into these three different categories. Actually, the associ association fibers is defined as the fibers that connected the different brain regions within one hemisphere. That means it will it won't go through different hemispheres. It's simply connect the different regions within the same hemisphere right here. So you may have some, we call the longitudinal or long uh, association fibers. Or sometimes you can see there is a so-called short association fiber, or sometimes we say U fibers, because it's simply connected the uh, neighboring uh, gyrus right here. So it's more like a U fibers right here. But for the conventional fibers, it's actually the fibers connect to brain hemispheres. So you can see the most important conventional fibers is called corpus callosum. Corpus callosum is uh, the, I think it is the largest neural fiber in your brain. It actually contains, I think, over 300 million axons within this kind of a structure. So this is a very huge one. Uh, and it definitely goes through left and right direction. <coughs> And the final type is the projection fiber. It actually connects your brain with the peripheral nervous system. So definitely it will project, project the axonal fibers to the spinal cord, go through this uh, brain stand and to the spinal cord. This is called projection fibers. Okay. So let's start from the association, association fibers. I put a sentence right here so you can uh, just remember that the inner con interconnect various cortical areas, but very importantly, within the same hemisphere. Okay. So you can see there are several different kinds of the, uh, fibers, or sometimes we say fasciculus or tracks, actually uh, located within one hem hemisphere. In these um, cartoon pictures right here, we actually only display the main tracks, the largest tracks that you can see. So for example, for the long Long fibers right here, this one is actually called the superior longitudinal fasciculus. It's connected the frontal lobe to the parietal lobe and also to the occipital lobe. And for the connection between occipital lobe and the uh, frontal lobe, we have another uh, tracks or fibers we call the inferior frontal occipital fasciculus. Okay. And then for the connection between frontal lobe and the temporal lobe, we have oscillate. Alcinate fasciculus. It's just like a alcinate shape right here. Okay. And there is the, another one. I have already introduced this to you. The uh, arcuate. Arcuate fasciculus actually uh, connect the broca areas with the vernix area. Okay. And as we mentioned before, there is also some short association fiber we call the U shape or U fibers that actually connect the neighboring uh, gyrus regions right here. And for the medial, medial view, right within the uh, limbic lobe, there is a singular. There is a fiber that actually goes through the whole limbic lobe right there. Okay. And there is, from the medial side, there is another thing that we call the inferior longitudinal fasciculus. It actually connects the temporal lobe to the occipital lobe. This one is actually connected the frontal lobe to the uh, occipital lobe. But this one is actually connected the occipital lobe to the temporal lobe right here. So I think at least uh, these uh, few fasciculus or few fibers, you, you need to memorize the term. If you have the damage, axonal damage that may cut or damage the axonal fibers right here, it definitely can affect the functional connectivity between two specific regions right there. Okay. So that's why sometimes the y major uh, y major degeneration can also cause the brain function deficiency. Because if you don't have the pathway, if you don't have the uh, the way to interconnect the different brain regions, that makes your brain 
become very hard to work as a team or collaborate with each other. So I think the Huai meter is also the essential structure to ensure the brain functions can work properly. And that is the uh, figures from the textbook. And this one is actually reconstructed by the MR imaging. And then specifically, the, the technique is the division tensor stratigraphy. I think this is a pretty old technique. It's actually um, believed around 2001. And this is actually the pictures from a textbook of, uh, published in 2005. It is actually relatively simple pictures for the MR stratigraphy, but you can actually see through the pictures that uh, the fasciculus that we introduced in the previous slides can actually uh, be identified using the MR image. Okay. So for the uh, for the one, for example, this one, this is uh, alcinate fasciculus right here, and this yellow one is actually the superior longitudinal fasciculus, and this one is actually the inferior longitudinal fasciculus. So this is connected the temporal pole to the uh, occipital lobe right here. Okay. And also you can see there is a, a superior frontal occipital fasciculus right here. It's also connected the frontal to the uh, occipital lobe right here. So you can identify the several different um, fasciculus or fibers even using the uh, MI technique right here. So as I mentioned before that sometimes we say brain connectivity we will say the structural brain connectivity and actually uh, using the trajectory technique. So I can re-identify really the structural connection between different brain regions. And the second part of the uh, hormeter fibers is actually called uh, commensural fibers. And uh, you can remember it's, it's actually the interconnection between hemispheres. Okay. So the largest uh, portion, I think maybe the only portion, is actually the corpus callosum. In Chinese, Pianzuti, you may have heard this before, but uh, Corpus Colosum is the, uh, the word that you definitely need to memorize. Sometimes we will uh, call it short in CZ, just call it CZ. Okay. And the Corpus Colosum can actually divide it into five different portions. Sometimes you can see some literature may divide it into more segments, but uh, I think the, the standard or the most common way is divided into five different segments. From the very, um, very first part, we called, um, I think we start from the posterior portion to the anterior portion. So the very first one we call the spanium portion, okay, like the tail portion right here. Then isthmus right here. And then uh, this part we call the body. It's occupying the most uh, region right here. And then genial. Genial is like the knee. It's kind of the, the, uh, the bending regions right here. So we call genial region right here. And then rostral part or rostrum part right here. So you can identify it from the cartoon picture right here or from the middle sagittal plane of the uh, T1 weighted image right here. So you can easily see rostrum, genial, body, isthmus, uh, and uh, spending right here. If you reconstruct the fibers using, again, the MR stratigraphy techniques, you can see there's extensive fiber connection through these uh, corpus callosum regions right here. So I, I say this contains more than 300 million axons right here. And it's definitely the largest fiber bundle within your uh, cerebral. And I can tell you that actually um, the corpus callosum is so important because it actually interconnects uh, every lobe. I mean, the frontal lobe, parietal lobe, occipital lobe, it's a very, very important structure that your brain can actually inter uh, communicate between hemispheres. And you can take a look, if I take the uh, segment, it, it is a different segment way. So this is actually, I combine the genial and the, uh, the, the rostrum part as one, and I separate the body region into two to three segments. And the final one, CC5, is actually a spanning portion right here. And now I try to label the different portion, the fibers related to different portions in to different colors right here. So you can see the yellow one is uh, highly correlated to the frontal regions right here. And these three are correlated to the motor and the sensory portion right here. This is one for the uh, visual cortex or the occipital lobe right here. So you can see through the uh, lateral field and also the top field right here. You can see the how fibers go through, uh, go within your brain. 
Now, this is another example. Sometimes if a patient uh, suffering from the is suffering from the uh, seizure, then there is one treatment, this is one uh, surgery that a, a neurosurgeon can perform called Cobus colostomy. That means you can just just disconnect. You can disconnect your both hemispheres by actually just dissect uh, the anterior portion of the Cobus colostomy. So now you can see the anterior portion becomes dark uh, on the T1 weighted imaging, and you can see the fiber connection is actually now can only observe the within the preserved post causal region right here. Okay, so this is the way, actually this is a very effective way by this kind of a neurosurgery, you can reduce, I think around 80% of the instance rate, uh, seizure in instance rate. Okay. okay. And the final one is the projection fibers. Um, we say that the projection fibers is actually project from the, your cortical region to the peripheral nervous system, or receive the information from the peripheral, uh, peripheral nervous system to your brain. Okay, and uh, there is a, a, a large and a compact bundle that the most uh, projection fiber will go through. It's called the internal capsule. We will have a picture later, and uh, you can memorize uh, for the projection fibers. There are two main things. The first one is cortical pedal fibers. Actually, this is a uh, the fibers for afferent information. Afferent information that means the information is received from the peripheral nervous system. The information is come from the outside of your brain. Okay, this is called the afferent. And another very pretty similar one is called the afferent. Afferent uh, is more like the cortical uh, fugal fibers. It's actually uh, the fibers that will send signals or information from your brain to the peripheral nervous system. So this one is uh, come inside your brain, this is go outside your brain, okay. So I think there are uh, so many different types of fibers. If you are interested, you can just try to remember the terms, but I think um, at least you need to remember these two different words. And actually uh, from the actual T1 weighted imaging, you can see the region that I'm currently pointing at this part is the internal capsule. Internal capsule. And actually, internal capsule can be subdivided into anterior limb, anterior, anterior uh, portion right here. And the, this part is again the uh, genial region. Okay. And this one, this part is actually called the posterior limb. And for the anterior limb, it is actually critical for the interconnection between solomons and the frontal lobe. But actually, posterior limb is a critical for motor control because most of the post uh, projection fiber will go through the uh, uh, the posterior limb of the internal capsule right here. Okay, so you can see uh, this one posterior limb is particularly important, but anterior limb may control other different functions right there. So you can just try to uh, remember the structure of the internal capsule at least anterior limb, genial, posterior limb, and there is a a part that's most distal part is also uh, is called uh, retro lenticular limb right there. Okay, so the, here is a cartoon picture right here, trying to delineate the boundary uh, of the T1 weight image right here. So you can uh, try to uh, read through the uh, words right here. So you can see actually the interior limb is critical for the from, uh, frontal eye view that I mentioned before, and the other region you may sometimes read. So many different fibers named right here, but try to remember that actually the fiber name is always named after the regions that they interconnected with each other. For example, when you see the region called frontal pointing fiber, that means it interconnected the frontal lobe and the pons region. Okay, so we call uh, we call the fiber as the frontal pointing regions. So they have very similar uh, naming system right there. <coughs> And again, if you reconstruct the projection fibers through the uh, tonography technique, you can see this one is actually this uh, solomic uh, or solomocortical uh, fibers right here. This is more like the uh, cortical uh, vehicle system, uh, cortical, cortical, uh, pitot, cortical pitot system right here. It's more like the average system projected from these uh, solomons to the cortical areas. Here, okay. 
I can see sometimes we call this is irradiation because actually the fibers will go through every direction. So we call uh, this is a kind of a sonic radiation. We have anterior portion, superior portion, and posterior portion, I think. And again, you can display this from a different way. This is again reconstructed using the uh, amateur photography technique. So if I define the solomons into different nuclei right here, and I try to label the projection uh, to the different cortical region by different colors right there, you can see actually the sonic radiation has an extensive connection with your clinical uh, region right there. The final structure you, you need to know is the basal nuclei, or sometimes we say basal ganglia right there. And I think at least uh, these three regions you need to memorize. Actually, there are so many different uh, terms you need to uh, you need to know, but at least, at very least, uh, there are three different regions you need to remember because uh, these three regions are uh, very oftenly uh, be discussed, be introduced during the uh, FMI analysis. The very first one is right here, close to the anterior home of the lateral ventricle. This one is actually the caudate nucleus. And uh, if you use the 3D uh, cartoon view right here, caudate nucleus is actually a curved structure right here, surrounded, actually uh, surrounding the a putamen right here. This one is a putamen. And there is a, uh, in, in actual image right here, this one is putamen. And this one is a caudate. So you need to think about this. If I cut this 3D structure into a slice right here, you will see this one is this one, putamen. And this one, you can only see uh, very front end right here. This is a caudate right here. And there is a small portion uh, within the medial side of the putamen, this one. This one is actually the globus pal uh, pallidus, this one, globus pallidus. And if you remove remove the uh, putamen away, you can see the medial side. This one is actually the globus pallidus, okay? So at least uh, these three structures from the actual imaging or 3D view, or even from the chronal view, you can see right here, this one is the caudate, and the head of the caudate right here, and this one is actually the putamen. Okay, putamen. Okay, so try to memorize this point. And if you really want to see the uh, globus pallidus on the chrono slice, you need to cut in this view, and then you will see this is putamen, and this one is the globus pallidus. So this is uh, the structure you need to memorize. I think this is the final one, cerebellum. I think after you go through the FM. FMI analysis, you always have the chance to identify some brain activation region located in the cerebellum. And actually, cerebellum definitely plays an important role in motor control, definitely. But you need to remember one point, cerebellum alone, per se, does not initiate movement. Who can initiate movement? Definitely the primary motor cortex. But cerebellum is placed as a role uh, to contribute to coordination. Coordination means kind of the uh, in Chinese, just coordination. I don't know. Just contribute to the coordination and the precision. If you want to have a precise uh, uh, motor movement, you need to uh, fine tune your your uh, motion. That is also contributed by the cerebellum. And the accurate timing, when you need to do what kind of a movement, is also controlled uh, by the cerebellum. So I think if you have the lesion uh, on the cerebellum, for example, there, there is a disease called um, a spinal cerebellar atrophy. Yeah, that means you will have a degeneration happens within the cerebellum. That definitely will cause the ataxia. Ataxia means the movement disorder or something. <clears throat> but not only the motor control, but also uh, very important uh, uh, functions that are highly connected to the cognitive function, such as the attention, language, even the, the regulation of the fear and the pleasure responses are also related to the uh, cerebellum, and specifically to the anterior portion, anterior portion of the cerebellum. You can see this picture is actually the posterior feel, posterior feel of the cerebellum. So there is a horizontal feature right here horizontal feature right here, and this one is the primary feature. They always go through the horizontal way, okay? 
And uh, above this primary feature, this one is actually the anterior lobe of the cerebellum. And uh, uh, below this feature, this, most, uh, this large part are the posterior lobe right here. But this posterior lobe can further divide by the horizontal feature into the cross one portion and cross two portion, actually. Okay. <coughs> I think uh, I have already given you a very huge information about the uh, neural anatomy, but I think this is just a very small part about our brain, but definitely the essential part you need to learn. Then you can actually uh, interpret, interpret your data. Where is the brain activation happened? And uh, um, where brain region may take what kind of the function? I think this is the essential knowledge you should know. And now, if you uh, do bring your brand, uh, you, you do bring your computer with you, notebook with you, and you do have the um, MATLAB installed, then you can try this uh, this GUI graphic user interface on the MATLAB. You can download this from my website or through this link, and then let me show you how to use this uh, this user interface. Before you just start start your MATLAB. And if you have already downloaded the uh, zip file right there, there actually is an uh, image atlas UI zip file, right? Just extract this, unzip this, okay? So you can see there are two folders and uh, one M file. M file is actually the map code. Just through the home, home tab right here, home tab right here, just press the open. And then identify, find, find out the M file that you just See, we see in the image atoms UI folder, this one. Just open this and file. Okay. Okay, now what you can do is to run this file. Okay, how to run this? You can simply press F5 button on your keyboard, or you can just press the run button under the editor tab right here. Just do this will be better. And then please press the button change folder. Okay. This would be better. Right, right. Now you can see this is kind of the interface that you can learn imaging atlas. I try to uh, import uh, a template, a template that named AAL, automatic atlas labeling template right there. Actually, this is the AAL 16. I try to overlay the atlas on the high resolution T1 weighting image right here. Okay. So how can you use this interface? For, uh, first of all, you can see there are three horizontal slider bars right here. You can simply just click the right uh, the slider bar. As you can see, the very first slider bar will um, switch through the different actual slices. So you can see the uh, brain images right here. And the second one will uh, switch through the chrono view. Okay, and the final one is go through the. Uh, and you can see right here on your right hand side there is a list, actually list all the different drivers, the name of the drivers right there, and for example the very first one uh, there is a one equals precentral. I didn't actually put a four name right there, but you got to know. There is a gyrus after the word, after the presential. And you can see there is an underline and L. L means left side. Right, R, R represents the right side. Okay. So you can see there is a presential and uh, for the left hemisphere and for the right hemisphere. But you will say then, how could I know which one is which? So you need to press a button right here. Look carefully. There is a button labeled as a start label tracking. This one, very small button right here. Start label tracking, just click, click it. Now you can learn, if you want to know where is the presential uh, gyrus, just click on the presential gyrus. For example, the right one, it will automatically jump to the location. It will point out the location, so you can know, oh, this, this place, this region is actually the presential gyrus. So you can go through, for example, oh, the teacher just mentioned about the inferior, inferior frontal region. So you can see right here, the name, for example, the number of the 13, it is a frontal underlying INF is inferior triangularity. Okay. okay stop, 
start the label tracking. And now you can try to actually move your your um, mouse. Now each region you are pointed, it will actually show you the name. So this this part may be the singular anterior singular. This part is the superior medial superior frontal lobe, uh, frontal gyrus. And this part is the inferior inferior frontal gyrus for the uh, pars triangularis part. Okay. And here this part is the cerebellum. So you can see they are actually the fermis part and there is a different name of the uh, cerebellum. For example, this is actually the cerebellum cross cross portion right here. So it's just a way you can simply move your mouse uh, from different field of the image slides to try to learn. So this one is the insula. That's the, what we mentioned before. This is a, a small area actually hidden uh, behind the temporal lobe. So you can just try to use this small user interface to help you learn the image atlas. One day, you will definitely need to explain what you are looking at on the fMRI data. So you can definitely learn the neural anatomy. And of course, this is atlas. This atlas is actually the AL atlas. There are several different kinds of atlas, so-called Broman atlas, or some uh, atlas developed by John Hopkins, or something else. You can pick different atlas, but in this case, I use the AL. Great. Do have fun with this uh, image address UI, and uh, I do encourage you to spend some time on this to really make sure that you know the image address. Okay? So I think that's uh, all I'm going to say today. And uh, again, you can download all the materials, including the Atlas Viewer UI, image Atlas UI from my website. Okay.